Welcome to Uncompromised Revival Fire. I'm your host, Dr. Caleb Cooper. This show is a transformational call for the revival remnant to arise in the last days. God is raising up a generation that is called to contend for sustainable revival and transforming awakening across the earth. Be ignited, fueled, and fired up with an unchangeable, unshakable, inextinguishable release of the fire of God in your life. The time is now to allow the Word of God to transform your heart and empower you to do exploits for the kingdom of God as uncompromised revival fire empowers you to be nothing less than everything that God has called you to be. Welcome to Uncompromised Revival Fire. I want to talk to you about commands to cross over into the supernatural or becoming a crossover people. I believe that you're going to face times and seasons in your life where you're going to have a natural situation that requires the supernatural power of God, but know that you're in a moment where it's a divine setup for God to supersede or overthrow the natural laws of this earth with the supernatural laws of heaven. Now, we can learn some things from Joshua 3. I'm not going to read it all, but let's look at some of these things that I believe is going to help you become that crossover people. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out, and they came to the Jordan, and he and all the children of Israel lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp. They commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priest the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, this is important, for tomorrow the Lord your God will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all of Israel. And they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in The Jordan. Now, I want you to look at some of these commands. I don't want to jump right into them right away. I want you. I want to kind of set the tone right so that you understand that God wants you to cross over. See, I don't know whoever's watching this broadcast right now what you're dealing with exactly, but here's what I know prophetically: is that some of you watching this broadcast have a Jordan in front of you. Maybe you've got a Red Sea moment in front of you, and you know you need to cross over. Maybe it's financially. Maybe it's with with your health. Maybe it's in your ministry. But you need to get to the other side. And you're facing now some resistance for whatever reason. Now, we know that prophetically we're in the year of the open door to step into what God has for our lives. But it's also the war that is happening at the door. And so we know that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down all arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So there's commands given to cross over this Jordan. Now, by the supernatural hand of God. So here's what I want to say to you. On the other side, it may be a breakthrough in your ministry. On the other side, it may be a breakthrough financially or in your body if you need a touch or in your mind. But here's what you've got to settle in your heart. I'm going to the other side. I'm crossing over. I'm not going to stay right here. Now, This Jordan, you got to understand that when a Jordan, when you face a Jordan in your life, a situation where you're trying to cross a path, you're trying to go to the other side, but there's some resistance, you got to. The good for them that love God, for them that love God, and those that are called according to his purpose. So let's look at this. In the Jordan, 
I don't want to give too much detail because I don't want to get bogged down in all the passages that refer to the Jordan, but I want you to understand that the Jordan in this particular case, it marked the end of Moses' ministry and what Joshua was about to walk in. Remember, my, so, my servant Moses, he said, is dead. And so Joshua, just like I was with Moses, I will also be with you. So Moses had a Red Sea. Here's Joshua in the Jordan, but great things are about to be born. Now, many events took place in the Jordan. In the plain of the Jordan, we know that Lot chose the plain of, uh, plain of the Jordan, Genesis 13. Jacob crossed the river twice, Genesis 32. Israel camped on it at the end of 40 years, Numbers 22. The book of Deuteronomy, scholars believe, was uttered and written on the Jordan, Deuteronomy 1.10. The word of God was revealed there. So there's a lot of happening here. The river was dried up three times supernaturally, Joshua, Elijah, and Elisha. And you can look that up in 2 Kings 2, 7, and 8. And so, uh, 2 Kings 2, 13 through 14, actually just read 2 Kings and, and you'll process a lot there and then look at Elisha. But battles were fought on the Jordan, Naaman was cleansed on the Jordan. And so you can read the Gospels, we know that there was baptisms, John baptizing Jesus at the Jordan. And so you've got all these references where there's greatness. You've got to understand that there's greatness in your Jordan. I know that it can feel intimidating. I know that you can feel like hell is on your heels. I know that you can feel like you're in the realm of impossibility. But let me say this to you. Though you might be in the realm of impossibility, you serve a God who says with him all things are possible for them that believe. Now, in the midst of this, it's revealed that the Jordan, you could study it out, it would overflow around March and April. April. This could be a prophetic word. You process it, but we're coming up on, you know, or we're in right now. Let's just say that March and April season, but it ain't the only time that a Jordan is coming into your life, okay? Don't get bogged down like I'm going to wait until March and April because that's the only time you're going to have warfare or only time you're going to have a Jordan. But I do find it interesting in 2020 when the majority of the churches were shut down and everything was starting to collapse and you can find our story. You can go to calebcooperministries.com. You can find where we refused, absolutely refused to shut our church down. Some people may or may not agree with that. But at the end of the day, our local sheriff stepped in, deputized our entire church. A movie was made out of it. It's called Noncompliant 2. The sheriff, you can get it on our website. It'll bless you. But I'll never forget that would occur where lockdowns would begin to happen in that March time into April. Okay, we felt the Jordan rise, and I heard the Lord say, Son, keep my lighthouse open. That this, what was happening with the virus was going to be known as America's great storm and America's great divide. And we saw those things take place. But I knew that in the face of my Jordan, I had to stand up and just trust God in the midst of it. And so I had the New, Me New Mexico State Police serve me a cease and desist order at my home for refusing to shut down. But God also armed us spiritually. And on the natural battlefield with the sheriff that refused to comply with that. And what we found there was that he deputized our whole church and it was very powerful. Again, watch the movie. But my point in saying all that is to say that when I found myself in that particular Jordan in the March and April season of 2020, I had to apply the same principles I'm going to share with you right now. And so I want you to understand this. There's four things that Joshua makes clear, and the second thing has about four things to that one thing that we've got to discuss, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But number one, if you're going to be a crossover people, if you're going to move over your Jordan and see the supernatural hand of God made manifest in your life, then you're going to have to follow the presence of God. See, my allegiance is not to man, it's to God. We need to obey governing authorities, I understand that, unless they want you to sin. Okay, so there's the Romans 13 when they're trying to do good things, but I'm not supposed to submit to evil and sin. I'm going to Acts, Acts 5 is very clear, okay, when you begin to look at that, that we must obey God over man. And so in this particular case, I want you to understand this, in this crossover type moment, their allegiance had to be to God, to follow God, not the naysayers that may be on the left or the right. But we've got to follow God. Listen to the verse, verse 3. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark 
of the covenant, the Lord your God, and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from that place, from your place, and go after it. In other words, follow the presence. The Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of the Covenant is a representation of the presence of God. Now, we know inside of that, what they call the God box, the Ark of the Covenant, there's the Ten Commandments because you're not going to follow the presence of God unless you're full of the Word of God. Okay, so that represents the word of God. There's Aaron's rod that budded. In other words, fruit came off of it. Okay, almonds were produced once that stick was stuck into the presence of God. And we know that when we get into the presence of God, the fruit of the Spirit comes off of our lives. Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So we can't just have memorized word in our heart. We've got to have the fruit of the Spirit in our life. And then there was, there was a jar of manna in the presence or in the ark of the covenant and it represents you know it means what is it it's the bread of his presence okay man can't live on bread alone but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the father and jesus said i am the bread of the bread of life and so we got to keep our focus on him and there's so much more revelation to that but i don't have time to address that so follow the presence of god make up your mind i'm going wherever god goes exodus 33:15 Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. That was the heartbeat of Moses. That was his ministry. He looked at the situation, though he had been trained in the supernatural, and he says, God, if you're not going, I'm not going. And we've got to live there. Psalm 1611 says, you will show me the path of life, and your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I'm with you. Be not afraid or dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 139, 7 and 8. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I made my bed in hell, behold, you are there. And so my point in bringing these scriptures out is to help you understand that there's joy in his presence. There's peace in his presence. There's guidance in his presence. There's supernatural activity to overthrow your Jordan in his presence. So make up your mind. You're going to move according to presence, not people because people can get you in a mess secondly Joshua says listen if we're going to cross over if we're going to become this crossover type people then this is going to have to happen in your life sanctify yourself and you'll see God do great and mighty things he'll do wonderful things sanctify yourself for by tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you then Joshua spoke to the priest so to cross over your Jordan what, uh, you got to take inventory of your heart, take inventory of it and say, Lord, if you find anything in there that's not like you, I repent. Wash me in the blood. Sanctification means to be set apart. Holiness means to be set apart. But sanctification is the process by which you're being set apart, which is why we're sanctified as the Holy Spirit leads us and by the blood of the Lamb. And so the Word of God gives us the blueprint on how God is going to do these wonders. That word wonder in the Hebrew, by morning, means surpassing and extraordinary things that God is going to do when his people sanctify themselves. So I want to say to you, if you've got a Jordan in front of you, pause for a moment. Don't look for all the human wisdom. Don't look for all the demonic wisdom. Don't look for all the earthly wisdom that's out there. Look for the Holy Ghost to help you as you begin to sanctify yourself before the Lord. Now, I told you that the second one, sanctify yourself, actually, listen to this, has four parts to sanctification. We've got to move quickly, but I want to make sure you get them. You're sanctified biblically by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 13, 12 through 14. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Now watch this. I want you to understand this for just a moment. So we're sanctified by the blood. Apply the blood of Jesus to your life. If you've got a Jordan in front of you right now, let me tell you something. Hell is the accuser of the brethren. Satan is the accuser of the brethren day and night against your life. But listen to me for just a moment. You have the blood of the Lamb that can render a powerful supernatural verdict in heaven. He already declared one verdict over your life as the blood-washed believer that you are declared not guilty in the courtroom of heaven. When he wiped your sin away. 
And so whatever's in front of you, the same blood. When you apply the blood, you are applying the life-giving power of Jesus Christ on that situation. Apply it to your sin. Apply it to your geographical location in which you're about to sin. Wherever you're at, if evil's near you, my God, if plaguing thoughts, if lying thoughts, if there's whispers of hell while you're facing your joy, make sure that you begin to sanctify yourself so God can do surpassing extraordinary things by tomorrow with a vessel that is clean and pure. See, a lot of people want to bind up the devil while they live like hell. And it's not going to work. You can't dance with devils and expect to walk with God. And so we've got to get to a place that says, hang on here. If I've got a battle or spiritual warfare in front of me, I'm going to literally cross over, but I'm going to do it through spiritual weapons in which I pause and sanctify myself before the Lord. Now, we're sanctified by the blood. Number two, we're sanctified. That was one of number two. Number two, sanctified by the word. Ephesians 5.26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word. Okay, so we know that the word of God is the inerrant, infallible, irrefutable word of the living God written over a period of 1,500 years by 40 different authors, all walks of life. There is no error in the word of God. We need to apply the word of God to our lives. Psalm 119.11 says we hide his word in our hearts that we might not sin against him. And so it's imperative that you get the word in you. Hebrews 4, 11 and 12, you should read it. The word of God is living. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It's a discerner of thoughts and intentions. So you need the word of God. It's a hammer that breaks down the hard parts of your heart. It's a sword. It's a light. Psalm says it like this, that the word of God is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. It's a laver in which we can wash ourselves and sanctify ourselves before the Lord. Now get the word in you. You're going you're gonna to struggle to sanctify yourself at your Jordan if we don't have the blood applied and we don't have the word of God executed. Number three, concerning sanctification. We're sanctified by the Spirit. Okay, we're sanctified by the Spirit. 1 Peter 1, 2. An apostle of Jesus Christ to the pilgrims. And we can go down all that, but listen to this part. Verse 2 says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and sanctification of the Spirit. In other words, the Holy Ghost is working in your life to sanctify you and set you apart. So when he speaks, listen. When he brings conviction, listen. The word conviction, to convict you means to convince you that You're guilty before God, okay? I know sometimes we don't want to be guilty, but when we're guilty, we're guilty. The process of sanctification requires that we yield to the spirit of the living God. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, Do not quench the Holy Spirit, which means to snuff out the Holy Spirit's flame. Not that you have the power to shut down the fire of the Holy Ghost, but you do have the willpower to say no to the fire of the Holy Ghost in your life in which you could be quenching it. And so I don't want to quench the sanctifying power, firepower of the Holy Ghost in which the Holy Spirit comes to bring purity, passion, and power in my life by the fire of His Spirit. Now watch this. I want you to understand this for just a moment. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.25 says, if we live by the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit of God or walk in the Spirit of God. Ephesians 4.30 says, we ought not grieve the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit's working. He's convicting your mind and heart. He's sanctifying you. So we apply the blood. We apply the Word of God in our life. We listen to the Holy Ghost. We sanctify ourselves at our Jordan, and we'll find that God will surely do great and mighty things, wondrous works by morning. Finally, number four of this number two here concerning sanctification, sanctify yourself. You've got an obligation, a spiritual obligation to do some things yourself in your own will. Now, the Bible says that God will work in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure, but you have got to literally place your will under the will of God and say, not my will, but yours be done. That's what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. So some of the sanctification, 2 Corinthians six seventeen says, come out from among them and separate yourself, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. So in other words, you've got to decide to actually... Set yourself apart. Don't go into places that dishonor God. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from every form of evil. Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. 
Do not, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, which is the word metamorphosis, to be changed from one state to another. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so don't be conformed. You've got to actually make up your mind that you're going to sanctify yourself through the process of saying no through your willpower. Your will is defined as your ability to choose and refuse. Okay, you're always going to have that. And there's not going to be a revival that's going to stop you from having to choose. No one had more the glory of God on them than Adam and Eve who wore the Shekinah glory for their very own clothing. They didn't even have threads like we have. They had the glory of God and before sin came. But in a perfect environment, they chose to disobey God. So moving back here, watch this. If we're going to cross over, we're going to have to follow the presence of God. We're going to have to sanctify ourselves, which I gave you four ways to do that. Number three, back to Joshua, you're going to have to carry the presence of the Lord with you. You are carriers of the Holy Ghost. If you're washed in the blood, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you. You've got the spirit of God. The spirit of God in you bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. See, Matthew 3.11. John said, one greater than I will come, whose sandals I'm not worthy to even lace. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. So God wants us to be carriers of revival, carriers of awakening, carriers of the supernatural. And so watch what happens here in the text. Verse 6, Joshua spoke to the priest saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will exalt you in the sight of Israel and they may know that I was with with Moses as I was with Moses so also will I be with you and so we see that victory here the crossover by the carrying of the presence of God lastly here we're gonna have to stand let me tell you something Ephesians 6 is clear having done all stand It gives you the full armor of God. You're going to have to stand. Let me tell you something. There's some things coming to America and across the globe that you're going to have to stand. You're going to have to be found standing in the last days. This is what it says here. When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, by this you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you And it gives all the lists here. Moving on, verse 13, And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, and the waters that come down from upstream, they shall stand as a heap. In other words, God's like, I'm going to dry this thing up. I'm going to crush your Jordan. I'm going to deal with this situation, but you will be required to stand. Do not flake out. Get your feet in that water at the edge like you've got spiritual authority at some point he told Moses he said it to Joshua everywhere the sole of your foot goes when he introduced himself in a burning bush to Moses the first thing he said is take off your sandals you're on holy ground in other words step out of your natural ability and step into the supernatural ability when he shows up on Joshua everywhere the sole of your foot shall tread upon you shall take that territory so get your feet on the edge of that Jordan when they hit the ground I'm going to swallow that Jordan. I'm going to command everything to begin to dry up, but I will only do that for those that stand. So you can't be intimidated by your naysayers. You can't be intimidated by the doctor's report. You can't be intimidated by what's happening in this nation with the Antichrist beast system that wants to literally unleash a broken economy that's a one world government, one world religion, one world currency. Bible prophecy is happening extremely quickly. Birth pains are happening everywhere. But you are a child of the living God. And Jesus said, up on this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So at some point you're going to have to rise up and say, I'm going to stand. Stand. Listen. Listen to it. The Hebrew means to take one stand, it's to take a stand against, to endure, to be steadfast, to be persistent. My God, don't take matters into your own hands. Put them in the hands of an awesome God. You be found standing, ready to press forward, regardless of what is seeking to resist you. In the name of Jesus. 
And I hope you were blessed by this portion of the broadcast, but I want to talk to souls for just a moment and just a couple of minutes that I have because I never want to miss the opportunity to look right at you and say, if you're watching this broadcast and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're going to burn in hell, you're not 100% certain that you're ready to meet Jesus. If you went by way of the grave or the trumpet blast, both of those events freak you out. You want to know why they freak you out? Because you do not have peace that surpasses all understanding. Let me tell you, if you don't know Christ, you should absolutely fear death death. You should fear that your body is going to expire. You should fear hell if you don't know Jesus. This is not a scare tactic. I've heard people say we shouldn't, you know, preach the word of God where people get saved because they're afraid of hell. Let me tell you something. The people that are in hell are afraid now because they're stuck there. I don't know what kind of gospel is ripping across America, but it's some sugar-coated, broke-down, non-gospel of the Bible. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. There is no doubt that God is madly in love with you, that there's not a sin you can get yourself into that the blood of Jesus won't get you out of. I don't care if it's homosexuality. I don't care if you're a drunkard. I don't care if you're a witch or a warlock. That just ha- you're just happening to watch this broadcast right now. I don't care if you were bound up and you were a child molester. Whatever your, the events that have occurred in your life that has literally plagued you with sin and iniquity, we know a loving God that will pick you up, stand your feet up on the rock, Rock, dust you off, wipe your sin away, declare you justified just as if you never did it because he paid the price for your freedom by shedding his blood on Calvary's cross. But you're going to have to pray. You're going to have to open up your mouth and mean it in your heart, lay everything down and repent. Okay, this is not just go through the motions, say a prayer because I saw it on television or I saw whatever broadcast, wherever I saw this broadcast and I just go through the motions. Don't go through the motions. There's a God that's in love with you. Lay everything down. Pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I surrender. I'm so sorry for all the wickedness in my heart. Wash me in your precious blood. Forgive all my sin. Jesus, I believe that you died and that you rose again for me. Come into my life and become Lord and Master and King. And as you fill me with the Holy Spirit, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, you're a new creation. Old things pass away and all things become new. Your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. You need to find a place that you can literally connect with, find you a church, find you a ministry that you can connect with. And you can just keep pressing into the things of God. Get in your word every day. Pray consistently. Stay in unity with the body of Christ. Don't allow your heart to be offended. Okay, Live holy before the living God because Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you. Until next time on Uncompromised Revival Fire. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Uncompromised Revival Fire. If you desire to fuel that fire, visit CalebCooperMinistries.com. Our partners get access to video e-courses, a full sermon library, e-books, and much more. Be ignited and transformed to experience personal revival that you might be empowered to spread the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. You can also shop my full library of books that are sure to equip you in your walk with God. That's at CalebCooperMinistries.com. Also, I want to get to know you. So go follow us at Caleb Cooper Ministries on Facebook or Instagram. And lastly, never miss an episode by subscribing to Caleb Cooper Ministries on YouTube or wherever you watch and listen. See you next week.